everyone, this is Ryan, and today I'm going to be doing a shorter tutorial on how to play Sniper Arms. Uh, if you're here watching this, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what the game is about. Yeah, you are dueling with your opponent, and you each try to defeat each other by taking various actions and playing cards against each other. Uh, I'm going to start out by going over the different zones of the board. There are many different zones. This is Life. This is Aura. This is Flare. This is Shadow. And this is Distance. There's also two zones that are not clearly laid out on the board. One of them is for enhancements in play, both yours and your opponents. And one of them is for cards that are currently in play and resolving. You don't really need to worry about that last one at all. Just be aware that it exists for reasons. So what are each of these zones for? Life is literally the objective of the game. You lose the game if you lose all your life. And there are generally two ways that you will lose life. One of them is taking damage from an attack, and the other is reshuffling your deck. Every time you reshuffle your deck, you are required to pay one life afterwards at the cost. There are other ways you can lose the game too, aside from losing life, but those are character specific, so we won't be getting into them. Yeah, but whenever you take damage to your life, Unless something specifically directs you otherwise, it goes into your flare. Flare is the zone you use to pay for special abilities. These cards here, which I'll get into later. Um, but just know that certain cards and effects have a cost or interact with this zone called flare. And it gets fueled when you take life damage or when you spend an action to focus, which lets you take from your aura. Your aura is an area that lets you interact with the rest of the board in various ways. You can move tokens from shadow to your aura. You can move tokens from distance to your aura. And you can move tokens from your aura to distance. Those are the basic actions available in general. There's one other, I think, that I will talk about when we get into distance. So distance here is this uh, line in the middle. This represents an abstraction of how far away you are from your opponent. This is not a literal position on the board. It doesn't matter where these Sakura tokens are. So like if this this is exactly the same as as this situation or this situation could theoretically be the same thing. It's a little harder to keep track of, and it's kind of bad etiquette to lay them out like this. But just know that this is the same meaning. There is no positional value on distance. I think that's all the zones covered for the most part. Shadow, again, is just a reservoir. It collects uh, any spent tokens. Damage from Aura goes to Shadow instead of to Flare. And any spent Flare will go to Shadow. And certain arrow effects will direct things to Shadow. Let's go over start of turn phases really quick. There's actually a thing on the board here that makes it really clear. So at the start of your turn, you gain a Vigor. Any enhancements in play, any enchants, I guess, lose one petal to Shadow. You have the choice to reshuffle for one life, and then you draw two cards. If your draw pile doesn't have enough cards in it, then you take one damage to either aura or life. For each card you cannot draw. This is true regardless of whether you're drawing cards during your start phase or outside of it from a card effect. So let's talk about these things really quick here. Bigger is represented here. You can spend it to do basic actions. When you gain it at the start of your turn, you just take it by one. And you can never have more than two. You can never have less than zero. This token here represents flinch. Uh, when you're flinched, you put this over your vigor. This doesn't stop your ability to spend your vigor at all. You can still spend freely when it's on there. It just means the next time you gain vigor or would gain vigor, instead of gaining that vigor, you remove the flinch token. 
And when you're flinched, you can't be flinched a second time. Important to note that. Um, so you draw two cards. When you start the game, you have three cards in your hand, and you can mulligan those three cards however many you want and redraw that many, which is important. It lets you set up your deck during the, the start phase more or less well enough to give you perfect knowledge of what you're going to draw. So after your start phase, which you... Oh, yeah, another important point. You skip the start phase on the uh, first turn of the game. So first turn, you would not gain any vigor. You would not take any chance down. There wouldn't be any in play anyway. You can't reshuffle and don't draw any cards. So then we get to the main phase. The main phase is where you can use basic actions and cards in any order. Or, as you can see here, you can choose to play a throughout card, which is a subtype of cards with this yellow border here. If you choose to do a throughout card, that is all you get to do for your turn. And then at the end of your turn, if you have more than two cards in your hand, you discard until you only have two cards in your hand. And any end of turn effects trigger before that. So you do end of turn effects, discard down is the last thing you do. Um, so let's get into basic actions again. I already talked about this a little bit when I was talking about Aura. Uh, basic actions let you manipulate the board in various ways. So they're listed on this Vigor card, which is kind of handy. You choose to either move forward, backward, recover, or focus. So to do that, you would turn this down to represent that you spent one action. Focusing moves from your aura to flare. You do that to help pay for your specials or to make room in your aura, which I'll get into in a little bit. Forward movement takes from distance and puts to your aura. This means that forward movement actually improves your defenses because you have more aura to block with as long as you're moving forward. And if you want to move backward, you take from your aura and put it in distance. It makes moving backward a costly thing to do unless you have cards that make it easier. Another way to take a basic action is to take a card from your hand and discard it face down to discard pile. So let's say you moved up to this point and you have five aura. You want to move forward now. You can't do so unless you empty your aura first. So you would have to take a focus action or you would have to take damage to your aura somehow to get rid of it, to make room to move forward more. Another thing you can do here is you can play an enhancement and pull from Aura to make more room there. And I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go into that right now. Oh wait, there's one more basic action to talk about. So when I was talking about distance before, there's another aspect of distance that I forgot because I'm a dumb dumb. Um, When the distance gets down to two, you're at what's called master distance. And when you're at master distance, forward movement turns into a retreat action. And how that works is instead of moving from your aura, you have the choice to move from shadow to distance. But the other thing to note there is that because of that, when the distance is two or less, you cannot move forward. So if we were in this board state, I would not be able to use Vigor to move forward because the master distance is 2 and we're at 2. So I could do this, which is something you normally can't do, but this is not allowed. Let's go over card types. There are two main types of cards. There are normal cards, which have this bag, and special cards, which have this bag. You'll have, oh, you'll have seven normal cards and three special cards by default whenever you build the deck. Um, special cards also have a flare cost on them. So if you look at this, you'll see in the top right corner, that is its flare cost. Now there are three main types of cards that are in both 
special, and normal cards. Those are attacks, actions, and enhancements. So each of them are kind of defined by restrictions. Actions are the least restricted card type. Generally, you can play an action at any point during your turn. Um, no restriction on it, unless it has some text saying you can't do it for whatever reason. Some actions are restricted, so be aware of that. But in general, you can just play these as if they were basic actions at any time during your turn, as long as you aren't doing a throughout card. Unless that throughout card is an action. Um, attacks have a range restriction. So you'll see at the top of any attack card, there you have to have distance in that range to be able to play it. And there are cards that virtually manipulate distance, so be aware of that. It doesn't have to be that many tokens in distance. Distance just has to be equal to that. Attacks also have a value at the bottom left. The top number, the left number, if you prefer, is the damage it does to aura, and the number underneath that is the damage it does to life. Your opponent chooses whether they're taking it to aura or life, unless they don't have enough aura, then they are required to take it to life. Provided they don't have a reaction that will let them deal with it in some way. Which we'll get to. Um, the last type is enhancements. Enhancements are kind of like actions, in that you can play them whenever you want, as if they were a normal action, but they do have a requirement, and they usually have an ongoing effect or a delayed effect. Um, so you can see in the bottom left of this that there is a number and two petals. That is the charge of the enhancement. Play an enhancement, you are required to take that number of petals either from shadow or from your aura. It can be in any combination. But it needs to have as many as you can pull put on there. If there aren't that enough tokens for you to put it on there, you uh, can still play it. You just move as many as you're capable of moving, and that usually means that you're you're draining your own aura. So it's it can be difficult to play them early in the game, but that can be advantageous too. So just remember that and use it to your advantage. Um, now there are two subtypes to these three types and that is throughout and reaction a throughout card we already discussed a little bit when you play it that's all you're doing for your turn that's it you're done after that resolves reactions you can play in response to your opponent playing an attack on their turn you can only play one reaction per attack and you cannot play a reaction to a card that was played as a reaction. So if your opponent plays a attack reaction against your attack, you can't react to their attack. And that's it for card types. Okay, so now that I've gone over all the cards and how to play, I'm going to go over another really basic part of the game. So first of all, I'll quickly talk about this. There's two different game modes that the mod supports. Um, there's pick two here, which you'll just pick two Megami, and your opponent will pick two, and then you'll build your decks and play each other. And then there is pick three, ban one. And this one, you pick three Megami, and your opponent picks three, and then you each choose one of your opponent's Megami to ban. So they get a kind of reduced power set based on... It lets you kind of like be a little strategic about who you get to play against from your opponent's uh, free Megami. It kind of stops you being as counterpicked. So we'll do this really quick. Let's see. I can't pick anything, so I need to change my color. All right, so deck building is pretty simple. You pick three specials and seven normals. You'll see that you have access to both of the characters' cards, and you can use them in whatever combination you see fit. There are seven normals per Megami and four specials. So you could just straight up take all seven Obro cards and then three Obro specials and probably not have a very good deck. But that's all you need to do to, to play this. Um, considerations here. Um, there are a lot of different ways to build decks. you got to think about what your overall strategy is going to be and what your opponent is going to do to counter it. 
but that's not fit for a short video, so I won't go there just now. And it's actually going to be it. This at least nudged you towards understanding the game in some degree. There will be a more comprehensive video also. If you need more information, uh, feel free to check that out. Alright, that's all for me. Bye-bye.